bosses, how would you respond to a new employee who kicks off your first meeting by saying, before we talk about my work plan, I should probably let you know I have panic attacks that send me running to the restroom for a solid 10 to 15 minutes at a time. I'll need extra sick days for when I can't get out of bed in the morning thanks to my major depression. And it's likely I'll need to spend a week or so in an inpatient facility at some point to figure out why I think about suicide when there's no real reason why, just so you know. What would you say as opposed to, oh, maybe we should give HR a call? We need to get past the idea that it's taboo for managers to talk about mental health with their employees in the workplace. Understanding that mental health is just as important to address as physical health is the first step that bosses need to take. If an employee comes to you with a broken leg, you wouldn't say, your life is great, everything's fine, suck it up, right? To know how to address an employee who comes forward with a mental health issue, it's important for managers to encourage open and honest relationships. Even though the common perception of vulnerability in the workplace is that it's seen as a weakness, could prevent promotions, or even get people fired. Fact is, openness and honesty actually strengthen relationships and create a higher level of trust. When an employee comes forward with a personal challenge they are facing, responding with, I feel that way sometimes, or someone in my family deals with that, I know how hard it can be. The manager immediately makes the employee feel comfortable and creates a stronger connection between them. Unfortunately, though, many employees worry that if they do come forward with a personal challenge they are facing, managers will instead respond, now I know why your performance has been slipping, or I'm not sure you're a great fit for this team. This fear causes employees to keep their struggles to themselves, which could lead to performance issues, time off for disability, or worse. For employees to feel safe enough to talk about their personal lives at work, it is crucial that managers openly support and encourage this vulnerability. I had my mental health struggles at work. None of the managers I'd had gave me the confidence that I could talk about the anxiety and depression I'd been suffering from since I was a teenager. I just knew that if I asked for help, I would surely be shown the door. It was right around my 10th year at the company I work for when I lost my dad, which caused my anxiety and depression to spiral. Getting through each day became nearly impossible. Instead of making progress on my various projects, I'd spend a solid portion of each day in a bathroom stall, sobbing with a fist in my mouth to stifle the sound. I did my best to go through the motions with my manager, Susan, by trying to put a smile on and convince her that I was a reliable, dependable, and trustworthy employee, even though I knew my own performance had been slipping. One day after a meeting where I had to excuse myself for almost 15 minutes thanks to a panic attack, Susan asked to speak with me privately. I just knew I was about to get fired. But instead of walking to her office, she guided me towards the cafeteria. I'm getting some tea, she said. Would you like some? I will never forget the immense relief I felt as we sat at a table having a conversation, not about work, but about life. She spoke to me not like a manager to a direct report, but as one human being to another. I could see how much she cared about me, and I knew right away that I could trust her. So I opened up. And after essentially telling her my life story, I was surprised to see tears in her eyes. Mark, you've been through so much, she said. I want you to know I'm here for you, no matter what. I didn't expect a manager to be someone to show such empathy and compassion. But after that day, I knew Susan would always have my back. Suddenly, I felt invigorated. We began meeting often to discuss how she could help me succeed and I began making progress. I took on new projects and excelled. Susan had faith in me, and I felt inspired. Susan established trust and strengthened our relationship with her empathy, acknowledgement of my feelings, and compassion. 
she made a conscious effort not to just hear my words, but the story I was telling. She embraced my vulnerability, which gave me the freedom to be completely open and honest without the fear of judgment. And she provided a psychologically safe space where I felt empowered to bring my whole self to work instead of wearing a mask that could crack at any moment. I'm coming up on 20 years in that same company now, and I am the most fulfilled I have ever been. With student support, it was easy to stay, knowing that there are managers who place such importance on mental wellness. And thanks to Susan's encouragement, I've evolved into a leader in this space, actively working to make change on the corporate scale by guiding and educating others, breaking all kinds of stigma along the way. Whether having to manage a mental illness or not, all employees want to be seen as top performers. We want the business to succeed and feel like we contribute to that success. But many of us are struggling due to anxiety, depression, and other types of mental illness. Added to this, many of us are trying to manage side effects from the medications we're on, which can range from drowsiness and unpredictable GI issues to hallucinations and even suicidal ideations. It can be completely overwhelming at the idea of trying to be our best when dealing with all this and feeling like it's not okay to ask for help. According to Mental Health America, three in five employees feel they aren't receiving adequate support from their managers when it comes to mental health. That's three out of five. This absolutely shows the importance of managers taking a step back from projects every now and then to openly connect with their employees on a more personal level. By providing a psychologically safe space and appreciating the struggles your employees are going through, you will see that they feel even more inspired to be their best, truest, most authentic selves each day. Here are just a few strategies you can put in place to create a culture where mental health is valued and supported. Have a coffee or tea. Genuinely ask how your employees are doing. Actively listen. Show kindness, empathy, compassion, and understanding without judgment. Ensure your employees feel valued and included. Ask how you can help when help is needed. Embrace and role model vulnerability yourselves. And by having this level of understanding, you will foster a strong bond and unbreakable trust among the entire organization. Start and participate in a support group, allowing employees to connect with each other, share resources, and gain new insights. Start and participate in a program led by mental health champions, offering training on how to communicate about mental illness in a healthy way. Help establish a support line where employees can connect with therapists when needed or even bring a therapist on site once or twice a week. Help bring in an external speaker to talk about the mental health struggles that many employees face. Give Fridays, or at least Friday afternoons off, as an opportunity for your employees and yourselves to rest and recharge after a long, hard week to focus on wellness and self-care. Provide quiet spaces where your employees can go for meditation, prayer, deep breathing, tai chi, or yoga, and support them using these resources. And by the way, I can testify that the bathroom stall is not a quiet space. So, bosses, whether at a Fortune 500 company, nonprofit, public service sector, fast food restaurant, or any place where there are leaders, you will be amazed at how the business can benefit when you are guiding, supporting, and encouraging your employees this way. And when employees open up to you about their panic attacks, depressive episodes, suicidal ideations, or more, you'll have a much better idea of what to say and be able to share the most helpful resources that are available to them. And you won't just help your employees become stronger, more inspired, and confident, which will only help the business to succeed. You might just save a life. <laughs>